All right, I believe we're live. I hope. Hello. I hope that's what that means. Hi. The word L I V E. Oh, we've got the Viking ship right in the background. See, here. it's perfect. We always do that on our Vikings videos, and this one's even better. Um, I'm Derek Wetmore, and this is Matthew Caller. We're going to talk on this Facebook Live edition of Vikes Insight about uh, North Turner. The Vikings made a surprising announcement. I mean, I was surprised by it. Maybe you weren't after having watched the film. We'll talk about that in a quick second. Uh, I was surprised to hear that offensive coordinator North Turner resigning. Pat Shermer is the interim offensive coordinator now for the Vikings. Apparently, according to Mike Zimmer, they're not going to add another staff member. So, status quo the rest of the way. But today, Matthew, is anything but status quo. We'll take all your questions here. But, but Matthew, man, uh, you said you watched the film and it's uh, it's... Sunday, or Monday night's game against the Bears was like a fireable offense, basically, and yeah. now it, it ends in resigna- resignation. You know, I hadn't planned on even doing an article for 1500ESPN.com. Derek and I drove back from Soldier Field in Chicago. Good times. And so I got home, and I was watching the World Series, and I'm just, you know, let's just take a look at what happened in the game film. And my eyes popped out of my head, guys. I mean, I couldn't believe that they were continuing to have slow-developing, long routes down the field, seven-step drops. Thank you, sir. Um, We're right in front of traffic. I couldn't believe that they continued to have these long routes and going with the old-school North Turner offense after it was a complete disaster against the Philadelphia Eagles. It was just stunning to me. Yeah. I was looking at the middle of the field. It was wide or it was wide open. The, it, was, it was all down the sideline, deep routes and deep drops for Sam Bradford. And once again, he was just getting smoked every time he yeah. dropped back. It was uh, really frustrating to watch because I couldn't believe they didn't make a change after the Eagles game. Now, I'll ask you, as we start to see some questions rolling in, we'll definitely get to your questions in a second here on Facebook Live. Um, If you have questions, just comment below, and we can see them right on the phone, so we'll get to those. But my question to you, Matthew, we saw how successful the quick passing game was against the Houston Texans. I mean, the Vikings, that to me, in my book, is the most dominant that the team has looked this year. Um, It was a good win against a bad quarterback, I get it. But still, with the quick passing game and the short developing routes, the three-step drops for Sam Bradford, I was kind of surprised that we didn't see that against the Eagles, and then I was doubly surprised we didn't see it again against the Chicago Bears. What do you think, now that Pat Shermer is the offensive coordinator, how do you think that changes the game plan for the Vikings, or more to the point, how should they change their offensive game plan? I think they're going right back to what they did against the Houston Texans. And my question is, how did we go from point A to point B? How yeah. did we go from a game against the Houston Texans where they were exceptional on offense? Sam Bradford had it probably his best game of his career. He had 123 quarterback rating, was getting the ball out extremely fast. Even when they were down the field routes, right. there was one guy going deep and other short op- options in case that deep man was not open. Open, and there were several plays. Uh, Jarius Wright got involved. He's like an over-the-middle guy where there was like a one-step drop and Bradford got the ball out before he was hit. I expect that we'll see that again uh, coming up this week against Detroit, that what sure. we'll have is a lot of routes that are going over the middle of the field and trying to create confusion as defenses are using zones with their linebackers. Chicago, amazingly, used mostly zone defenses and rushed four the entire game. Yeah, still got uh, there. And they got there all the time. And that's the point about this entire offense is that North Turner's offense probably works great if you have the best offensive line in football. Yeah. If you have the worst offensive line in football, it probably does not work great. And my guess is that North Turner was saying, this is just a guess in terms of a difference of opinion, that he was saying, look, let's just get better protection, put more tight ends in, and and, and send three guys out. And the other side was saying, whether it's Zimmer or Shermer, no, we need to spread it out and get the ball out quicker. And I tend to side with Pat Shermer on that. Got a quick uh, question here. It's more of a statement on Facebook Live. And then I'll get to something on the interesting timing of this uh, based on what happened yesterday. We'll get Mm -hmm. to that in a quick second. But Lawtown says, I hope they go back to what worked in weeks one through five. Now, I'll disagree with that just a little bit in that week one, it was Sean Hill, different, Mm -hmm. different game plan. But weeks two through five, Specifically, and we talked about it just a second ago, but the Houston game is really what the blueprint should be for this offense. Now, especially that Philadelphia and Chicago has shown 
every other team in the NFL, hey, you can get pressure on these guys. Rush four, sometimes blitz a fifth guy. You're going to get home to the quarterback, and that makes everything problematic, everything difficult to do in your offense, especially if the routes are designed to get people open further down the field and take a longer time to develop. Yeah. Um, is, is there another week that I'm missing that's like, hey, the Vikings' blueprint oh, of yeah. offense should be this? Yeah, no, the, the uh, Giants game. Move our Giants game. Up here a little bit. There you go. I need the ship. Um, yes, the Giants game. Also, you sound like Christopher it, Walken. It's a, and that blue oyster. I, I need more. I need more ship yeah. behind us. You want me to hold it? Your, is your arm getting tired there? That's go with I the. Gotcha. Go with the right. Here, I'll help you out there. Um, so anyway, uh, the Giants game too. If you remember, That's right. there was a um, there was a punt and then uh, there was a fumble and the Vikings recovered. The first play that they came out with was a quick pass to Cordero Patterson, yeah. maybe like a 20-yard pass or something like that, a screen. And we thought, that's another thing, is we thought we were seeing Cordero Patterson and his career and him becoming a big weapon on this offense. And then the kind last yeah, the last two weeks we haven't seen a whole lot of him. And they did run one screen pass. I was checking it out on film, and I put it in my article at 1500ESPN.com. I, I mean, it worked. They yeah. got eight or nine yards throwing it out to Patterson. And there were several other plays that maybe they missed him on or missed a second option. That's the thing, too, is that Sam Bradford just did not have time to drop back in the pocket and look through a bunch of options with Norv Turner's offense. He's getting offense. killed. I mean, he was getting hit in the backfield so often that you started to wonder, man, when is this? He's a company line guy. He's the kind of guy that will go to a press conference and say, everything's great. we got to work on a few things. But for the most part, I'm confident in what we're doing here, and this team's 5-2 and two for a reason. Yeah, I was started to wonder when is he going to start to throw other people under the bus for getting himself hit so much. We got a couple other questions I want to get to here. I saw Linda had a question in there, so I'll get to hers. Um, other thing about North Turner offense is QB drops the same distance and to the same spot on all passing plays. Doesn't that make the defensive pass rush much easier as they know the rush lanes remain the same? I think it also makes defensive line games easier when they'll run a stunt up the middle or anything like that. That's an interesting point, Linda. Um, I hadn't really thought about it like that. I think it's more about the time that it takes to develop, that it allows those guys longer to get to the quarterback. But it's an interesting thought that being dropped at the same exact spot, they know where they can run to. Well, here's the other thing about that, Linda, is that when you're dropping back seven steps, it gives the edge rushers time to beat the slow defensive tackle yeah. or def uh, offensive lineman around the edge. That's a great point because if you're dropping seven steps and Jake Long's knees don't work anymore or TJ Clemmings can't block anyone, they're not ending up going around Sam Bradford in the pocket. They're going right to him, yeah. which is what we've seen over and over again. It's a great comment, and I think that's been the biggest issue that TJ Clemmings clearly cannot play as a starter in the NFL, but they really don't have many other options, especially if Alex Boone's injury is significant at all, if his concussion is going to keep him out. They're just going to have to play Clemmings, so the best option you have is take the snap and get rid of the ball as soon as possible. Yeah. Don't give time for those edge rushers to get around Jake Long and TJ Clemmings. We'll get to more questions in a quick second here. Let me grab this from you. Go ahead. More, My arm's getting tired. More questions. Yeah, we just have to trade off. Hey, we should really have Teamwork. A, That's we should, what it's called. We should have a film guy doing this. Film guy or no, gal. we don't need that. Camera. So, quick thing on Linda's point, and then we'll get to some other questions. we can do what we want. It's true. It's a... <laughs> Uh, but anyways, we'll get to a quick uh, some other questions here. But I like the point about the speed rush. How many times have you seen that on film, Matthew? Because you watch the film of every game. How many times have you seen, I'm thinking specifically, I can think of at least two right now off the top of my head, wherein Jake Long standing in the left tackle spot, whether he just came in the game or whatever, and it's just a straight speed rush. He doesn't even get his hand on the right defensive yeah. end. How many times have you seen that from either side of the line that Bradford is basically hit because he dropped so far back in the – the, the end on either side doesn't have to do a double move, doesn't have to do a power move, no swim, nothing. It's not even a defensive line game. It's just straight, I'm faster than you, and I'm going to run around you to get to the quarterback. Many. The answer would be many okay. times. Yeah, I guess that was a long question. Well, it, that, with Jake Long, that's how they've beat Jake Long, is they've just gone around him because his knees don't work the way that they used to. With TJ Clemmings, it's been many different ways that they've beat him. And, yeah. uh, you know, Pernell McPhee the other night, I included it in my article, the little clip of it. He just ran right through T.J. Clemmings, which should not be possible for a man that big. And that's the bigger point about North Turner's offense is that this is what you're dealing with at left and right tackle. You are dealing yeah. with two of the poorest players in the entire league, so you've got to work around that, and they just didn't seem to want to adjust. But what's so strange is, from North Turner's standpoint, 
Where would the difference of opinion be? I mean, that's what's come out, that you know, maybe it's a difference of opinion between Zimmer and North Turner. How could anyone not have the opinion yeah. that the short passes need to be the way that they were playing offense? That's what's the, confusing to me. My opinion is the offense is not very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. I mean, but my, I mean, how could you watch the right. tape and say, no, 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 we need to stick to this? Here's a question from David. David Forleady, I believe. Sorry if I'm getting your last name wrong, David. Uh, he says, any news on Turner's kid status on the coaching staff? He's staying. Scott yep. Turner is yep. still the quarterback's coach. I actually asked Zimmer in the press conference if there would be any changes. Because, of course, with Pat Shermer being elevated to the interim offensive coordinator, you wonder, all right, well, now you got a tight ends coach opening. You're going to go get another guy. And Zimmer said, no, this is the coaching staff we have. So only move besides uh, Norv Turner resigning will be uh, uh, – Pat Shermer taking yep. over yep. for him. So that's a good question, but there are no other moves on the coaching staff. Great question here from John or comment about the two-yard runs that are the problem. Now, yeah. here's another thing that I saw on film that was majorly problematic, which is... Spiking my blood pressure. Well, uh, there were there was a, a drive that each play was a Matt Asiata run up the middle. Yeah. I mean, how is that possible? He is the third-string running back. I mean, Jarek McKinnon, Adrian Peterson, you run three times in a row, you go, okay, those guys have a chance they to might break hit one. They could break a big one. I mean, they, they can make big plays. Man, Asiata's longest run was seven yards the other night, and he has never been a big break kind of guy. He's a nice bit player to have. I'm not saying that he shouldn't be on the team or anything like that, but, I mean, come in and pass block or come in and get a couple of yards on a third down, that's Asiata. He or you know he's even good at catching the ball out of the backfield. Sure. Asiata is not the type of guy that you want to carry you on any drives, and we saw that at times the other night against Chicago, and it was just infuriating yeah. to watch giving the ball to their third string running back when there are many better playmakers on the team. Sure. They didn't even try running Cordero Patterson. Right. Uh, yeah, we thought we'd see a little bit less Wildcat with McKinnon out of the game, but we did see one in Chicago. Um, one quick point on Matt Asiata, and this is not a football point. As a reporter, as a as a human person who is a reporter for his job, I felt bad for Matt Asiata today. He was not told about the move until the media was in the locker room. The media broke the news to him and said, are you surprised it's, that North Turner has resigned as the offensive coordinator? He said, what? Like, yeah, he was surprised. He was shocked. He had just learned it from us. So I don't know how this all went down this morning, Wednesday morning, as we're recording this, but... Uh, the team was not uh, officially told about the move until they saw the press release from the Vikings. So that's kind of an interesting way to handle it. Another Linda, question. Linda says, any chance we see some short rollouts, quick bootlegs by Bradford in the Shermer offense, or is Sam Bradford too slow to do those? Good question. I'm going to say that uh, I would like to see a little bit of that. If you think the other night, um, Kyle Rudolph had about a maybe an eight, nine-yard catch where Bradford did roll out to his right and then turned back and threw the other direction, kind of against the grain, to a wide open Kyle Rudolph, who had faked as if he was just going to block, and then he was open for that play. Bradford is not the type that is going to be a spectacular runner by any means, yeah. but he can move around just enough. He can throw a little bit on the run with accuracy. We've seen him on some play fakes, drop it off to Matt Asiata for big plays. He did that against Houston. There have been other times that they've done that as well. So, yeah, you could see a little bit of movement, but I, I think what we're going to see is a lot of what Philadelphia used last year, which is in the shotgun, maybe some play fakes, but look at the first read, get it out pretty quick, or dump it down to the running back, and that's it, because there's no time for anything else. And what I saw a lot on tape was no options for Sam Bradford. Yeah. No dump down, no check down. It was just drop back, look deep down the field at all these deep routes. I screen grabbed a few of them of, there's nobody that's running shorter than 10 yards here. There's nothing he can do. I mean, if he's got pressure, it's take the sack. Yeah. And it's too many negative plays that have really killed this team in the last two weeks. Too many sacks, strip sacks, things like that. Matthew asks on Facebook Live, if the team started 0-2 and won five in a row, would North still be here? And I have two responses to that. Because there were a lot of questions today in the Vikings locker room, too, about, man, aren't you surprised at this? The team's 5-2. and two. It's not like changes needed to happen. We got two responses to that. One, the Vikings are saying that North Turner resigned. If we're to believe that, this right. is not, this offense needs to change, we need a new guy. So if North Turner resigned, it has little to nothing to do with the 5-2 and two record. Yeah. Secondly, if you watched the last two games and saw that the, all of the pressure issues that they were allowing through their offensive line is just terrible, frankly, I wouldn't blame North Turner if he up and wanted to walk away from it. It's hard to fix. 
five and two is a little misleading for how this team has played the last yeah. two weeks. I think watching the game and seeing all of the problems that they have on the line is different than saying, hey, this team's still first in the NFC North. It's great that they are, good for them, but saying that they're five and two maybe ignores the fact that they have not played like a five and two team the last two weeks. Yeah, I would also say this. Um, I forget, I, we moved down to who asked the question. That was uh, Matthew. Matthew. Great name. Um, yeah, what, and he spells it right, too. Congratulations. Perfect. <laughs> uh, but what, what I would say is is this. If you went 5-2 and two and won five in a row and you were ranked 31st in the NFL in offense and looked like they did the other night, let's say they beat the Bears. Yeah. And let's say that they had, oh, I don't know, uh, 150 yards of offense. Sam Bradford's getting sacked, but they got two punt returns for touchdown. Yes. You, you still would, need to move. Yes, you would still be talking about major problems within the offense because everybody would know this is not going to work long term. So right. just wins and losses don't make all the difference when yeah. it comes to this. It's also how it looked as well. I like that one. Uh, Phil Mackey chimes in and says we need to do a video from the ship. From I, the ship? I don't know. That's getting a little aggressive. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I yeah, mean, yeah, we're getting like as close as we're possibly comfortable with. I mean, it's a Viking ship. That could be dangerous. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to mess around with that. Um, thank you for the suggestion, though, Phil. That was nice. Um, <sighs> Let's see what else. What the Wilfs think? Uh, Danny Bonin asks, What uh, he wants to know what the Wilfs think about this. I don't know. Frankly, and, and just this is only my fourth season covering the team, so I don't mean to come off as like veteran reporter guy, but to me it seems like the Wilfs, since they fired the first head coach when they got here, they basically have stayed out of football meddling. They don't come in and say, you know, they're even think back to the Adrian Peterson saga two years ago. They stepped in when it was necessary, but it's not like they were in the you know in the draft room talking X's and O's and stuff with people so I think ownership I think Zimmer clearly has ownership support I think Rick Spielman has ownership support and if anything went south in that relationship which it really doesn't seem like it did I mean you saw Mike Zimmer reacting mm-hmm. Matthew what they was, say get in the boat get in the boat man I'm not let's, let's go all right let's well get in the boat. I guess the people asked for it all right <laughs> um I mean it's we're not like trespassing are we I don't know who like okay let's just let's stand right now let's sit up on the boat. we're not kicked out all right we're up on the boat not kicked out until they uh, tell us we have to we leave. are legitimate Vikings now okay yeah. uh, great question here though um, is it a panic move I'm gonna say no I don't think it's a panic move I'll take this I think it is the right move I, I think that you do the smartest thing for your team whenever you can and if there's a difference now again he wasn't fired, so keep that right. in mind. So it's hard to say, is it a panic move? Well, I don't know, because the move came by North Turner. The move did not come by the Vikings. But if we go under the assumption that, the, yeah, it's not really what happened, yeah, I think we could do that, right? Um, sure, so, that's fair. Um, I just wanted your face for a reaction it, yeah. to that. Um, but I don't think it's panic. I think it's right. I think it's smart. I think it's, well, you know, this is not working, and somebody's got to go because the power struggle yeah. is going on here. And one of the things that I thought of was Mike Zimmer said last week, well, there's protection issues, and I'm going to have to you know, deal with those protection issues myself. It was kind of like a shot across the bow a little bit with him saying that he wasn't happy with how the coaches uh, had, had been doing things to protect their quarterback. Also, I want to show want to show the boat. Yeah, Here this is, is funny. A, this is the inside of the boat. Would There's awesome? uh, the end of it. Would it be awesome There's if the, we could show the flag? <laughs> the mast. There's the front of it. What would be awesome if we could show is all of the people that are currently driving by. There's a roundabout right behind us, actually. You can't oh, yeah. see that. It's facing this way, but... How many people are just looking at Matthew and I like we're yeah. sitting on the boat taking a selfie? Yeah. Like basically everyone that drives by is like, what? Is, what like what's going on? They're laughing at us. So you're welcome, Facebook Live audience. I, I have a quick thought on the panic move thing, and we should get to more questions. I see Linda's got one here. Um, panic move? If you're looking for a panic move at the 2016 Vikings, that would be trading for a starting quarterback <laughs> days before the regular season happened. This is, I mean, this by comparison is hardly even a blip. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater goes down in that Tuesday practice, a terrible timing and news for everyone in the Vikings, really. And they got together. I mean, Rick Spielman pulls off the trade of the year to go get Sam Bradford from the Eagles just days before the regular season start. That is a panic move. And so I'll, I'll, my only point is that panic doesn't necessarily mean it's the wrong move. Like you're saying, if it's the right move, you just make it. Uh, Linda uh, asks. Well, let me let me comment okay. first on the panic move. Okay, let me comment on the panic move. I think um, 
well, it's again, I mean, it's not really a move by them, but let's just say it is. I just want to keep clarifying that because if the fact, it, we don't know 100% of the facts because they don't say everything that happened. So that's what's, you know, that's what's Wait, tough. Teams right? do that? Yeah, I know. So they didn't say exactly how it went down. So there's a possibility they said, resign or you're fired. And he said, okay, I'll resign. There's also a possibility that he said, this just isn't working, guys, and we're just going to fight the rest of the season, and I can't deal with TJ Clemmings as my tackle, so I've, I've, I'm just going to let you guys take this. I'm too old for this crap. We'll see you guys later. And that's a number of possibilities. But if it is a move by the team to say, hey, maybe you should just move along, then, yeah, I think you're in panic mode when you have a great defense. Yeah. And your offense is 31st. It's and go time. People are calling you a Super Bowl contender through five weeks, and now they're saying, oh, look at that fraud, and deservedly so after you lost to the Bears. I mean, losing to the Bears is a time to panic. Yeah, that's a I fair think, point. I mean, that is one of the worst teams in the NFL. A lot of people were thinking, boy, they're going to be drafting the top quarterback out there. And they didn't just beat the Vikings. They smoked them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's time to make some sort of move like that if, indeed, they did actually make a move. Right. Uh, our guy, Mike Nordquist, says this video will go viral if the boat fell apart, too, right now. I sure hope it doesn't. I hope that's not the reason it does. Um, I don't know how I'd react to that. I wouldn't want my parents to see that. What, the boat falling apart? Yeah, you? like me becoming an Internet sensation with oh, you because we jumped yeah. on a boat and it came apart. Wow. That'd be a good metaphor, though. I mean, right? it's a Viking boat. It's sturdy. The uh, Vikings didn't make their way all the way from Norway to America <laughs> on this uh, boat if it wasn't sturdy. Okay? Fair enough. Uh, Linda, our friend, says, uh, seems to me this was talked about before 6.30 a.m. as if that was the first Zimmer heard about how good Shermer would be able to put the game plan together for today's practice. Um, like, my, and, and here's another thing that complicates this. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly the question, Linda, if you don't mind clarifying, but, like, Mike had retinal surgery yesterday how right. crazy is that like okay monday night game in chicago they lose to the bears they fly back to the twin cities zimmer had a problem with his eyes so he got it checked out by a doctor because he had, says he had scratched his eye during the game it turns out he has a torn retina and needs surgery to repair it lest he lose his eyesight can i make the joke i think you should i'm gonna make the joke I wanted to tear my eyes out, too, after watching that offensive brutal. line. That was brutal. Oh, Terrible. You can only make that joke on a Viking ship. That was terrible. Um, Linda, to, to, <laughs> to answer your question, which I think what you're getting at is, like, has there been talk about this before? Has this been brewing? And then suddenly you lose to the Bears. You've got to figure something out. Mike Zimmer really made it seem like, and we got to take him at his word on this one because we just don't know. Mike really made it seem like in that press conference, like, this was kind of like a... a a sad move for him. He was choked up at the end of that press conference talking about his buddy, North Turner, the only offensive coordinator he's had since he became a head coach. I kind of got to believe that maybe the thought had crossed your mind, but it's not like he was seriously entertaining replacing him with Pat Shermer, even though we've all kind of been, like, talking about it, and that's, like, you know, it's all over Vikings Twitter, and Judd Zolgat has been hammering the point that Pat Shermer needs to take over this offense mm -hmm. since Shermer was hired in Minnesota to be the tight ends coach, as Zimmer or as uh, Zolgad would call him. But I don't think this is the kind of thing that they were saying, hey, if this offense doesn't get fixed this week, you're gone. I really do tend to believe what Zimmer is saying, that it was kind of a, you know, Norv came in and decided, all right, they had a long talk, and this is just it for me. I don't know if I'm being naive, Matthew. What do yeah, you think? Well, I wonder about what Sam Bradford's role in this entire thing was. Because Sam Bradford... I jump off the boat. Let me just do this so you <gasps> get, a, get a little rest there. Jump off the boat. Be safe. Um, don't tell Kyle Rudolph. Just jumped off the boat. Oh, I, oh See? wow. Yeah, that's a Twitter slam right there. So, all right. Well, what I'm thinking about Sam Bradford is this. That Bradford said... Oh, well, I was surprised. I got a phone call from my wife after she got a notification on her phone. Okay, maybe that's true, and I'm not saying that Sam Bradford forced out North Turner. However, Sam Bradford knows Pat Shermer extremely well. He was offensive yeah. coordinator in St. Louis. He was the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia. Best year or half a year of Sam Bradford's career, I guess if you go back to like 16 games, the second half of Philadelphia last year, the, the start of this season where I think the presumption is that more of Shermer would have been involved because Bradford was showing up with such short notice. And if you're Bradford, I mean, maybe if someone comes to you and says, what do you think of how this is going? 
uh, what's he going to say? I mean, let's right. let's go back to what Pat wanted us to do, which is that West Coast offense, or at least more shades of it. And so, I, I mean, I wonder myself if Sam Bradford had some say in, hey, maybe it's the right time for you to move along. And he did say, I talked to Norv yesterday, and he didn't say anything was going on. Like, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I don't know, normal. because like I said, they're never going to tell us the full story. But if I'm Sam Bradford today, I just jumped up and double-clicked my heels with happiness. <laughs> That's an interesting visual. <laughs> He's an athlete. That's true. I can't do that. I don't think I could double heel click in the air. No, that but Sam anymore. Bradford can. Um, Chad asked, move to a four-man offensive line, and I think he's joking because the other team wouldn't apologize now, for that, and they would send it, just send the house, go get the quarterback. Uh, now, I what think were you going to say? Well, now, no, you're a, kidding. They're not going to move to okay, a four-man no, offensive line. No, um, that's that would be the hottest take of all on, time. Hold on, stay with me here. Tell me that. Rhett Ellison couldn't do a better job right, than sure. T.J. Clemens. So that's what I was going to say, is you bring tight end and help. I think, you no, know... No, no, I mean him as a tackle. As a tackle, he'll be I mean him as a tackle. T.J. Clemens is the worst-ranked tackle, according to Pro Football Focus, in the last decade. Yes, I think a tight end could do a better job against edge rushers than T.J. Clemens has. It really kind of surprised me that there wasn't a move for somebody on sure. somebody's roster to play tackle for this team. Yeah. Like, it, it is... You, you can't overstate how bad Clemmings has been. And this is a little bit of the, the like, North Turner probably has a really good offense. But if he doesn't have T.J. Clemmings and he has, like, I don't know, uh, you know, Joe Thomas, just to throw out a name, if he has Joe Thomas instead, this is going much better. Yeah. Because Bradford can throw intermediate routes. He can throw the ball down the field. I, I think, we haven't seen him do it that well, but I think he probably can go through the progressions if he's not terrified for his life. Yeah. And that's where the conflict is. And the only solution is getting the ball out quickly because I don't want to see them bring in more tight ends. Well, in fact, I would rather have four offensive linemen going one-on-one -on -one and not play T.J. Clemmings than using T.J. Clemmings. Well, so I think they probably what Kyle Rudolph might not be happy by this, but I think they're going to have to bring tight ends in. I think they're going to have to do better blocking from the running back position because Matt Asiata whiffed a couple times two weeks ago. And I'm curious to see if they don't elevate some tackle from the practice squad. Now, didn't they just re-sign Austin Shepard? Oh, B. That's not fun. A B crashing our uh, oh, Facebook Live get video. Get out of here, B. You're not allergic, are you? No. It's, it's just not fun to in be In general. Whoa. Whoa, it's a B. He oh wants to God. be in the video. Uh, I think he is. Um, he's on me right now, currently. What All do you right, want B, me to do? What, what is your take, B? Yeah. I'm not afraid of bees. Can you see this? Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, bye. All right, he's a little stage fright. Camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of bees at all. In fact, I am pro bees because they need to pollinate the earth. Dude, I'm terrified. So, I, really? No, not really. Oh. But I don't, I don't want to get stung. It's still painful. Uh, my wife is very afraid of bees. Ooh, yeah, She's never been stung. I, I've been stung a few times. It's no big deal. Anyway, sorry about that. I'm not sorry. Things, hashtag things that happened on the ship. We had we had no control. What the hell that. was I talking about before that? You were talking about you don't want to see tight ends oh, come inside. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I said they should yeah. elevate a tackle from the practice squad. I mean, that's the buzz, right? Oh, my God. Oh, this video is yeah. over. Uh, no, Shut no, it down. No. Okay, let me, let, let me make this point then. The What I'm getting at is I would rather see them spread the field, Kyle Rudolph and three wide receivers or four wide receivers, ball out fast, then I would see them going to multiple tight ends. Okay. I think that better fits what Sam Bradford can do, get the ball out fast. In fact, when Jarek McKinnon comes back or when Adrian Peterson comes back. Right, still a possibility. How about two running backs? Sure. That, if you go back and look at Philadelphia, which uh, I will uh, for a piece this week, go back and look what they did last year under Chip Kelly, two running backs is a distinct possibility. And one of the reasons I like that idea, if Adrian Peterson comes back, those are two playmakers. And Mike Zimmer said it really well the other day. They didn't make any plays. They need a big play from somebody. And Jarek McKinnon and Adrian Peterson are big play threats. McKinnon can catch out of the backfield. I love the idea of having both of those guys in at the same time. Maybe one of them can block, both of them can block if need be, or both of them can go out for routes, can run the ball out of those sets. I, I think we'll see that. I've got two questions for you before we end this Facebook Live session. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you to everyone who came out here. Two questions, and then we're going to go do our Vikes Insight video, yes. which you can find later today at 1500 ESPN Twin Cities on YouTube. 
Um, we do those twice a week, so nothing new over there, but go a check those videos out. A lot of stinging analysis on it's that terrible. one. terrible. That was terrible. Just a terrible pun. Terrible. So two questions for you, Matthew. The first one is, uh, you can be as long as you want. The second one's a quick hitter. First, does the fact that the trade deadline came and went yesterday and the Vikings did not make any moves, could that possibly be, hot take here, could that possibly be the difference in opinion North puts on somebody's desk and says, hey, Rick Spielman or Mike Zimmer or whomever, we've got to get a better tackle or two to make this offense work the way I want it to. No trades? Okay, resign the next day. Yeah. Is that coincidental? And I guess the second question then is, despite all of the problems, everything that we've talked about in this video that has gone wrong, are the Vikings still able to right the ship Good one. And become a Super Bowl contending team. Those, that's my two-part question. I'll leave you with that. Okay, second part first, I'm going to say yes, they still can be a Super Bowl contending team. Uh, the Patriots are the best team in the NFL. It's not close. Dallas, I think, is the best team in the NFC. That is close. But the Vikings are right there at number two or three. Sure, they're in that conversation. So if you're in the conversation and Bradford can get back what he had against the Texans and against the New York Giants, then the answer is 100% yes, they are. And don't overreact to two games, especially when there's a change made. Sure. Now, to your point, I think after that game, okay, a Philadelphia game, yeah, that's bad. That didn't go well. But it's on the road. What are you going to do? When, you, when it comes to two games in a row that were that way, a change needed to be made in some way or another. No matter how it came about, it needed to be changed. And if Rick Spielman said, sorry guys, I can't get Joe Thomas, then the response from Mike Zimmer and everybody else, Sam Bradford, would have been, you know, all right, we've got to do something then. We have to make some sort of move or some change needs to be made. Or maybe even Norv Turner said, you know, it, 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 I can't fix this. Maybe it's me. I mean, he's yeah. been around a long time. I don't know another offense, guys. I, I can't go back to, uh, you can't teach the old dog new tricks. I mean, that's the thing about not having all the information is there are a lot of different scenarios that could have happened in leading up to this. Plenty of room for speculation, though. So yeah. that makes it fun. Yeah. Um, that'll do it for this Facebook Live video. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to the B for making a guest appearance on this video. Thanks thank for buzzing by. <laughs> thank you. to. I have to put up with this all day. Thank you for the ship for being uh, such a great host. And if you enjoyed this video at all, go check out our YouTube channel, 1500 ESPN Twin Cities. We'll have a Vikes Insight video there later. You're doing a purple podcast. With Ben Gessling. I'm a busy man. Judd Zolgad. This is a busy day in Vikings land, so uh, check 1500ESPN.com Just for all those updates. Just a little worker beats. Stop. No. Just nope, stop. Nope, I refuse to stop. Okay, bye. Bye.